All right, hey guys, what's going on? I'm changing up the structure of these videos just a little bit. Again, if you like this kind of content, you can hit subscribe and hit that like button. And let's get right into this. So before I got, go onto the page on the iPad here, I want to just briefly talk about what we're gonna cover. This is again, gonna be relatively short, just like most of my videos are. I like to keep them short, sweet, and to the point. We're gonna be talking about rotations with octonions today. Octonions, if you're not aware, are eight-dimensional numbers. I was about to say four-dimensional numbers because we've been talking about um, the quaternions in the, in the most previous video on this playlist. Octonions are interesting in that we can think of them as eight-dimensional numbers, right? But what we want to think, start thinking of them about, or not perhaps start thinking of them about, but we want to kind of think about the basis of these numbers as being elements of a set of matrices and these matrices are unique in that they're unitary right and we want their determinant to be equal to one and later on in this playlist again this playlist is going to cover physics from symmetry by jacob schwittenberg Later on in this playlist, we're going to understand that these matrices that we're using as a basis for our quaternions or as a basis for our octonions are going to be considered what's known as generators of a Lie group, okay? We're not going to get deep into that yet because uh, we need to cover some other stuff before we talk about Lie groups and their generators. But for right now, let's, we just really kind of want to think about a basis and the basis sort of being represented as a set of matrices. So let's get right in to the whiteboard here. Okay, so when we're talking about octonions, we want to talk about first, actually first we want to recall a few things. So let's recall uh, this U1 mapping. Right, so this U1 mapping here is, we, we, this is what we did initially. We said one was somewhat equivalent or could be represented also as a unitary matrix or not a unitary, but an identity matrix. And we said that the complex number I <coughs> can be represented as, uh, as this matrix here, okay? And we found out that this representation, I, I sort of want to hit home the idea of a representation, right? Because there's a whole theory called representation theory that goes into this in, in depth. And so I want to use the vocabulary as much as I can. The representation is basically this, right? We represent one as a matrix. We represent the complex number as another matrix. We then moved on to talk about U2, the U2 mapping, or the U2 mapping added to more base, basis matrices, right? So we had our one, we had our two, um, who, not our two, but we had, so this is one, this is our same thing, uh, roughly equivalent to our, uh, this guy here, right? Then we add these other ones, right? So we have I now, and we have I in here. What's fundamentally different here is that this I here, these are really just bases basis to some vector space, okay? Remember, you can think about a vector space as being uh, literally a Cartesian space where you can build a vector, right? But the bases can be represented as something other than just basis vectors. You can think of them as basis matrices in this case, right? And so these other two basis matrices are these two. Right? So in this sense, we have one, two, three, four, four matrices is a four dimensional space. And what we're gonna see, what we're noticing here is that, okay, we go, we go from a two dimensional space of plane to a four dimensional space. This is, if you're familiar with special relativity, this four dimensional space is very, very good at helping us understand special relativity, right? So this is the U2 mapping that we did. U2 mapping again, we went from just representing I as a matrix to representing a new basis as a matrix, right? So in this case here, we had our complex 
plane. And this one here, we also have a complex plane, but it's like, it's four dimensional, right? I can draw three dimensions, but then perhaps the opacity of our point at whatever is also, it corresponds to the third, to the fourth dimension, right? Now, octonions. Again, octonions are not mentioned in the book. I just thought this would be fun to go over. Octonions could sort of perhaps lead us into understanding perhaps, um, what about U3? Okay, so what the, the logical next step, right, is to perhaps have matrices that are not just two by two, right? You can't really have a one by one, right? That's why we don't start at one up here, right? You can't really have a one by one matrix, that's just a number. So we start here, and then we can consider these other two additions, right? This is these two additions correspond to our U2 space, our U2 mapping, our representation. And then we get into these guys here, right? So these guys here, right? So we have an I, J, and K. I put dots over these because these are, they're in some sense fundamentally different than these guys, right? These guys are two by two matrices. These guys are three by three matrices. Right, so we have our I, our J, and our K, and they look like this, this one, and this one. Let's see if I have that right really quick. Uh, I have my notes. I just realized that this one should be a zero. Anyways, okay. And then we have this guy here, L, M, and N. Right, so these are different matrices. You could see here we're going, we're shifting our numbers in some sense, this along these, this direction and this direction, this direction, this direction, not really here, right? But all of these matrices are different in some way. If you look at them, you have this, then we have this one, then we have our matrix N dot, and we have our matrix O dot. Let's not, also not get confused as derivatives, right? This is, this would be kind of silly because, uh, we usually think of the derivative of the variable as being as having some dot. That's why I made these open dots on the top, right? And this is just really a nomenclature thing that I decided to do because I, the, the only point here that I wanted to drive home is that these, this I is fundamentally different from this I, which is fundamentally different from this I, okay? And then we have this guy down here, right? This guy looks a little bit weird, right? Uh, but it's going to be important, actually. Uh, the reason it looks weird is because, well, his, his uh, determinant is actually going to be 1, right? Because um, this, we're going to end up getting, you, you can calculate the determinant of this, and then this is going to, the, the square root of 3 is going to help, help it go to 1. Anyways, so what does an octonionic number look like? So once we understand the octonic number, what it looks like in octonic space, then we can understand what a vector might look like in that space. We can understand what rotations would look like in that space. And I'm not actually, I, I sort of misnamed this as rotations in octonians or with octonians because uh, I'm not actually going to do an actual calculation regarding a rotation in this space. I just want to sort of give us what these rotation matrices will look like. Uh, because these can be quite cumbersome calculations. Anyways, we can look at this now. We say, okay, these are all of the objects, all the three by three matrices that we labeled up here, right? So here, 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 all of these guys, all the way up to here, All right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? So you might wonder, okay, nine, why, what's the deal here? We're looking at octonions, not um, non-onions or whatever. Well, it's this guy right here, right? This is a real number. Okay, 
we always have this real number and we always, uh, this, a lot of times this real number isn't really considered part of um, what part of the nomenclature, if you will. So anyways, this matrix looks like this, right? You can do the calculation, right? It's not that difficult to do the calculation, right? So our A here is gonna get multiplied and placed in this upper, in this location, this location, right? So we have an A here and an A here. It's also gonna be placed down here. That's why we have an A right here, okay? And then our B, well, he's going to get multiplied by I and placed in this location. This location, you can see B and B, right? So we can do that location, or we can do that get this calculation and find out that any rotation in our tonionic space is going to look like a matrix. It's going to have a matrix like this, right? You can represent your octonion in this way or in matrix form in this way vectors in the space, right, are going to look, if you want to put them in matrix form, they're going to look like this also. And that's what we did in our previous video when we rotated with U2, right? So this was just a sort of a for fun um, look at octonions. We're not going to really dive into them into this playlist. This is just something that I wanted to do for fun and what we are going to go through next is we're going to start getting our feet wet with Lie algebras and that kind of material, right? If you're not familiar with Lie algebras, I intend to go pretty slowly throughout this book because um, I, I want us to I want us to really understand Lie algebras. And so, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.